While this week may not show it, spring has sprung here and no different here on Moral Side of the News. Thank you and welcome to our program. I'm John Blim with the WHAS Crusade for Children. We have a panel here, we have topics, so let's get started on this week's program. A Bardstown family pleads for help from Kentucky legislators. Family and friends continue to fight for loved ones killed and missing. Plus, how far is too far with social media? The tweet that has one political candidate apologizing. We'll discuss these topics with our distinguished panel here today on our program, Moral Side of the News. With us today are Dr. Tom Mobley, President of Louisville Bible College, Reverend Clay Calloway, West Louisville Ministers Coalition, Father Tony Smith, St. Lawrence Catholic Church, Reverend Sally McLean, retired Christian Church Disciples of Christ, and Rabbi Emeritus Stan Mile, Temple Shalom. Up first on this edition, our program, Moral Side of the News, this week, a family from Bardstown addressed Kentucky legislators on behalf of missing and murdered family members. Sherry Ballard's daughter, Crystal Rogers, disappeared in 2015. Sherry's husband, Tommy Ballard, was shot and killed the following year. WHS 11's Shea McAllister was in Frankfurt as Sherry asked for help to solve these crimes. Dozens of these magnets made their way to Frankfurt today on the outside of caravan cars. On the inside, people demanding justice for their loved ones. The unsolved cases of Nelson County. Not even six inches of snow could keep this crew from caravanning to the state capitol. I have to be there today. First meeting in Bardstown, Sherry Ballard led the charge. Her daughter, Crystal Rogers, went missing in July of 2015. And then her husband, Tommy Ballard, was shot and killed in November of 2016. No one has been arrested in either case. They're here with me. So I'm very excited about this. Her loved ones here in spirit and supporters from as far as Florida. I just love Sherry and the family so much and I want to support them as best I can. Lined up and then left, knowing this trip could bring the closure they've spent years searching for. I've just waited for this day for a very long time. And I feel like I can get Tommy and Crystal's voice heard. In front of lawmakers, a resolution read naming those who are missing and those who have been killed, each case still without a resolution. It's just important that when we're all out campaigning, I want everybody to remember these folks and tell everybody you meet if you see something, something out of the ordinary, bring it up, tell somebody. I don't want any family to go through what I have been through with this and my family and it's it it's different you know it changes your whole family and you have to struggle to get through everything and we're doing that now and but I'm hoping <laughs> hoping and praying this could be the trip that brings their search for answers to an end and no action was taken today in Frankfurt. However, Sherry Ballard tells us just the opportunity to raise awareness for these cases was enough for her. In Frankfurt, Shea McAllister, WHAS 11 News. And we're back with our panel on our program, Moral Side of the News and Panel, going to legislators asking for help for these unsolved cases. Your thoughts? That's a pretty big step. Big step. Uh, I don't know. They were seeking resource uh, support, assistance, I'm suspecting. But the key word in that article was no action was taken in Frankfurt. Uh, I think that uh, it was quite an opportunity for them at least to go to Frankfurt to make the case. Um, but uh, <clears throat> sad to say that with the, with the budget challenges that we all are facing across the board, you know, uh, apparently they're seeking some budget uh, uh, help in some way. And we all know, as the scripture says, money answers all things. You put enough money into something, towards something, you can make a difference. So like with many areas, uh, I'm sure Nelson County is no different, probably worse than many, uh, because of the size of the community. They just don't have the resources dedicated to um, law enforcement and the like. And FBI, I think, would probably be uh, one area that could help solve this case. But, but um, yeah, at least they were able to, to make the case in Frankfurt. So I commend them for the courage and the commitment and determination to at least go that far. Uh, but again, the, the fact that uh, no action was taken appears to be the mantra of Frank. Wouldn't they be better served if rather than going to the legislature, 
they would go to the governor's office and through the governor's office uh, to the state police establishment. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, behind this. I mean, it's a very sad situation. My wife often, in fact, the other day we was driving down the road, one of the signs that was shown there, she said, out of the clear blue, we weren't even saying anything. She said, boy, I don't know how she goes on and, and lives. And I don't know what she's talking about, but she often says that because it, you, our sign's up and you're reminded of the situation. Kind of like that movie, Three Signs and whatever that movie was. Three right? billboards. billboards. Three billboards, right. Uh -huh. it, it, it's a sad situation. Uh, this is one family that's involved. Uh, very tragic that it hit them in two years. Uh, one disappearance and uh, the other one uh, was uh, shot. Uh, this, the, the thing I would point out is there's been a lot of resources given there and I'm not, I think the idea here is, in my opinion, I don't know, is just keep it before the public and, and keep yeah. any kind of information that someone's holding back on, maybe get it to, oh yeah, I, I did see something. It, that's the important thing right now. One thing I would point out about it is none of these and for a while, people were saying, why doesn't Bargetown solve this? None of these happened in Bargetown. Not a one of them has happened in the city of Bargetown. They were all out in the county. Who is done in, in charge of the investigations? KSP, the Kentucky State Police. Mm -hmm. Federal agencies have been involved almost from the very beginning in, in some of these, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and being resources, uh, making resources available. Uh, when. Rick Sanders took over as commissioner at uh, KSP. Uh, you know, I have the highest regard for, for him. And then when he left the chief's job at, at Jefferson Town and became the commissioner of KSP, uh, one of the things he did last year was rehire two recently retired homicide detectives to just work on the Nelson County cases. Uh, so there's been a lot of resources, a lot of time Certainly, the Bardstown Department has been active in any information they can get and passing it on, and, and certainly the Nelson County Sheriff's Department, I know all those guys, and, and they're very active in wanting to get any kind of a, a lead or anything that they can do. Uh, but I think the thing right now for all these cases that are down there is to keep them before the public. I, I'm really discouraged about uh, Officer Jason Ellis's uh, situation. It, we're coming up on five years. And um, it's just very frustrating. I, I still stay in contact with uh, some of the family. And um, I'll never forget that morning. I can still visualize it. I can tell you the steps, almost the time frame. And uh, so it, it's a very horrible situation. I'm hoping that by keeping it before the people and the publicity, that maybe something will help this case, these cases break. Yeah. You know, if you live in a small town, Somebody knows something, and somebody's not telling because there's an undercurrent. And in that undercurrent, um, there's probably a threat of some sort that nobody can disclose. Or uh, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Sure. Small, knows small about towns this. have their own code, and almost every small town has the same kind of code. And you know what works in that small town, and you don't. And if this is a county situation, then um, somebody's not telling. Well, full disclosure, I am from Bardstown. Uh, haven't lived there since the 60s. But um, again, to your comments, uh, well, yes and no. But I would say to you, every community has its undertones. And uh, my re retort would be along with what Tom's saying. It's tragic to see that what this family's going through, but it's one of many families that's going through something of this nature, not just in Nelson County, but in Jefferson County and Louisville and most of your major cities and most communities and most neighborhoods have that same code, uh, perhaps a, a fear because they don't want to voice something that they know. Uh, I'm like yourself, Tom, in the sense that I think it's good to keep this in front of the public. But other than that, I don't know, you know, I was interested in one of the first comments when they first brought on, the family's going there for closure. Uh, I don't know what that means. Yeah. You know, closure, that, we use that phrase quite often, which is mean, almost becoming meaningless. If they're looking for assistance in resolving the issue, perhaps down the road this may occur. There are people working on it. It's not being left out there empty. But to me, it shows not just the, the crime in Nelson County, for whatever reason, uh, but the crime that's 
permeating our society, even here in the Louisville area. Look at all the families who could go to Frankfurt from here and say, where are the resources to assist in my yeah. families? Uh, Look at the unsolved cases unsolved. here in Louisville. Yes. I mean, you know, we're over 50%, I think, last year, maybe year four last year, I forget which year, but anyway, I think we're over 50% of them were unsolved, and, and the families are hurting for that. Yeah. Uh, rumors, rumors have been, you know, you talk about the undercurrent, there's rumors, and the, they try to follow up on all of them, some have been vicious. Some have gone after people with no basis. And that's the sad thing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that the rumors that do damage and accuse people of things where there's no basis of it whatsoever. So do you think, painting this with a broad broad stroke, are people just afraid to talk because they're worried about it? retribution? Or it, it could be any I, number of things. I don't know. What the, the, each, I mean, in each, general. Each, in general, well, you know, there's urban, urban, urban cold. Talk about snitching, anti-snitching. Mm -hmm. Snitches, I uh, mean, uh, snitches get s stitches, as uh, as the uh, was, the mantra yeah. goes. So I'm I'm sure that something like that could exist in in a small town like like uh, like Bardstown or Nelson County. Um, but but it just uh, uh, you, you have but the fact that it had so many with well, two murders that occurred within a family in a short period of time is that. What the makes this especially year. unique, right? right. Yeah. Right. Now that is the odds of hitting that. You can hit the lottery quicker than, than those odds. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, so, so that alone brings some unique uh, dynamics to this particular uh, family in this situation. I think. When was a kidnapping? Uh, I mean, they've never found the body. Is that right? Yeah, a disappearance and a killing. A, dis yeah, a, lot a of, disappearance. I think okay. most of the assumptions are right. what you're saying, but mm -hmm. actually, it's, it's still being treated as a Correct. disappearance. And I, I, I don't. Looking for closure, I don't think that, I don't, the only closure is that the person who is missing comes back in one piece, and mm -hmm. that's rather dubious after all these mm -hmm. years, so I don't think, I don't think closure in this situation, sadly, is to be found. I think the only thing she's doing is naming, naming the issue, and sometimes if you name the issue, that gives you some sense of relief, but I, closure, I agree. And, and the fact that they're keeping it, as I agree with, with uh, Tony here, that keeping it for the public mm -hmm. is, is, is a victory of sorts. In the limelight. You just don't let it die, don't let it disappear. You know, I it, think it's, that's, it's, it's uh, hard on the whole family. You know, it, sure. it's, uh, her, you know, you, your heart goes out to her. Her husband was killed when his grandson was with him and they had gone hunting. Now, the grandson had left to go back for something at the mm -hmm. truck or whatever, but. Uh, I mean, could you imagine being a, a young teen and, uh, right. and having to go through this? So it's, you know, it's affecting a lot of people and a lot of the community. And a lot of people, you know, even have fear because they don't know what's going on and it scares them. Okay, second topic today in our program, Moral Side mm -hmm. of the News this week. A Republican candidate for Kentucky Secretary of State faced criticism for a tweet suggesting he would use Congressman John Yarmuth as target practice. Candidate Carl Nett, a former Secret Service agent, was responding to this tweet from Congressman Yarmuth bragging about his F grade from the National Rifle Association. Nett responded with the since deleted tweet saying, move the button over just a bit, I'm trained center mass. Both the Kentucky GOP and Democratic parties have condemned this tweet. Nett has since apologized. So panel, your thoughts on this comment in social media, is Nett's apology enough of an apology? No. No. I think the world that we live in, to make this part of the conversation, is an obscenity. Uh, nothing more, nothing less, simply an obscenity. Uh, and to threaten the life of a sitting member of the United States Congress. Uh, I'm not uh, aware of the law, but is it not illegal to do such? I mean, to it's threaten? A, it's a yeah, felony. Yeah, it's, it's a felony. felony. Yeah. Yeah. Just like it with Rand Paul, you, but they are an attack or a threat of an attack. Yeah. So. Uh, the, the crime uh, takes uh, uh, a much greater. So is he going to be charged with a crime, this person? I'm not sure. Yet to be seen. I'm not sure what it is, but the, the attention has uh. been has been um, has been justified. I think I think even both parties have jumped on on board. But I think beyond just condemning it, I think some. Um, some action, some legal action, is probably likely uh, in this case. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but uh, but the attention alone is unprecedented and I, justified. I know I'm weird, people, but 
I, I, did you think he was really threatening him? Did yes. you think he was really yeah. saying he was going to do this? Yeah. Tom, I yes. would say it yeah. makes no difference. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I'm right. not saying right. it makes, I'm just yeah. saying right. he made the Don't statement. Don't play with that. You, it, just like you can't say bomb in the airport or someplace like that. You can't I'm do just it. joking. Fire in mm -hmm. No, you can't do yeah. that. That part of theater. But I'm recalling also back mm -hmm. under the past administration, and I have personally seen such at gun shows and whatever, where you would actually have a target with the president's. Mm -hmm. with the president's mm -hmm. photograph there. Uh -huh. Nothing was done about that, um, mm -hmm. which bespeaks the same obscenity, I think is what you're uh -huh. referring to here. But I would, I, yes, I'm opposed to what he has said and done, even if it's a, in a joking manner. Uh, a lot of things, even the current administration and our president, it was a joke. Uh, when you listen to the press conference, he was joking. Really? Whether he was joking or not, it's an obscenity to make such comments and things of this nature, I would say. Well, let me, let me finish. Uh, I, I don't think it was a wise statement. I probably lost this election. Look at who the man is, who his credentials are, what he said. But kind of, again, it's, he should not have said it. I'm not saying he should have. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's going way off if you believe that he really meant that a Secret Service agent did not say this in jest. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't. Well, and uh, can't my buy comment it. again is whether it's a joke or not. He shouldn't have said it. He shouldn't have said it. But he, of all people, should have known better. Especially if it's a Correct? Family. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, he, no, of all people, should have known better. He yeah. knew exactly but let's what not he was go saying. Off, I mean, I mean what a great day. What a response here. Uh, that we go off on something like this. Uh, when somebody misspeaks or says something or tells a joke, they shouldn't. I mean, how many of you have been in conversations where somebody told a joke, not maybe like this, but told a joke they shouldn't have said, or said an off comment they shouldn't have said? Let's not forget a man's career for all these years. Now, he'll lose the election. He's paid for it. He's going to pay for it. I, I think, you know, everybody's after him. So, but let's not, again, sometimes when politics gets going good, like it is uh, in Kentucky most of the time, uh, I think we overreact. Well, and I think, that's what I'm saying. Just uh, let's not overreact. I here. think it, it is, it's a part of a continuing discussion and narrative. I mean, it, some words that were were consistent in this particular whole episode involving NRA. We've been talking about that just about every other week. Yeah. Violence. Uh, we talk about that every other week. So and all those conversations Tweets about have, every other week. Tweet every other right. week, every other day. Seems so. Like. So those, the rhythm and the algorithms with those words alone, NRA, violence, shooting, all of that has, has been dominating the news for years, weeks, days. So that alone just added another level of, of seriousness to this episode. So I think that um, that, that, that is a part of what, what it gives momentum uh, to this with the Parkland, the children, and the NRA, and the shooting, all that together collectively is what gives this unique way, this may have been yet, yet a straw. Now, if you took this out of context with all the other things taking place, it might have been just yet taken as a joke. But given the gravity of those things collectively, it has to be uh, taken seriously, and it is. And it seemed personal. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, that's the point. It and seemed partisan. like it was, a, it, it was personal. And mm -hmm. so if somebody comes up and says mm -hmm. something like that, makes, an, mm -hmm. makes a statement like that to you, Tom, then you're just going to say, okay, well, I'm just going to forgive that person because they really didn't mean it. I actually have, but that's beside the point. Oh, you've actually had a death threat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the congressman wearing his F button to begin with, backing well, up the, a little that, bit? Do you that, applaud a, that, or? that? Well, that's another statement. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that is a free speech statement. Uh, and and uh, so, so that is different. That has, it does not imply threatening anyone's life, shooting anyone, anything like that. I mean, he, he, he just is making a statement about his value or regard for the NRA. So, so uh, that is what that is. Mm -hmm. There's also another factor here uh, about uh, what Mr. Mr. Nett said when he left the Secret Service uh, that he that he had that he had guarded President Obama, and I think that the statement was something like, "I'm I'm out of here. I'm not a bullet sponge for just anyone." Uh -huh. So okay. I think that that that, if anything, adds a great deal more fuel to the fire with this case. It's sort of cumulative. Well, I've read other statements where he's, he made that uh, said that he was, uh, 
you know, he had protected Democrats, he'd protected Republicans, he would have given his life for either one of them. So, Which again, is what his job would have required. Yeah, I mean, that's what he signed up for. He knew what he was doing, and he would have <clears> given his life for that, whether he agreed with the person or not. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. It just, to me, it's, it's just an overreaction, and I may just be reading it wrong. And, Tom, one, one thing you said, he's not going to get elected anyway. I don't know. In this day and age, I'm not so sure. No. No. I'm just you know, not, that, I'm that that could have been not, the thing that could get him elected. It's not a you know, it's not a given. Political climate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. right. So, so what's his own party negative? I don't uh, know. Before you hit yeah. the go button, read what you wrote. Is this an example of that? And just don't oh, do it. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. people, there's no filters. Well, the no filter in the current national climate, no filters. I mean, we have a, once you pull a trigger uh, and a bullet leaves, you right? Can't and call you you have you know commander in chief now that is no filters. So, uh, and it just creates an environment that is really volatile and, uh, and, and explosive. And where it's, this may have been not said because, but not because of the current climate and environment, people just, just send it out unfiltered, un spell checked. <laughs> I mean, just let it go, let it fly. Maybe if they put it out on Facebook or something, we can resolve the issue. Mm. <laughs> That's not the solution. That's part uh, of the problem. That's part of the problem. <laughs> All right, we have a third topic for our program, Moral mm -hmm. Side of the News, this week. We want to congratulate the University of Louisville women's basketball oh, team right on an here. amazing yes, season. Absolutely. This year, the Lady Cards won their first ever Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. Mm -hmm. They did this with a 20-0 start to the regular season, a record start and a record for consecutive wins. Among the highlights, guard Asia Dewar scored a team-high record 47 points Mercy. one game and was named ACC Player of the Year. Mercy. Mm -hmm. All in all, an amazing year for Jeff Walls and the Lady Cardinals, even as the University of Louisville and its men's basketball team faced a roller coaster of season that started with the firing of head coach Rick Pitino. Panel, your thoughts on the women's basketball accomplishments? Lost, is it lost or above these scandals that are plaguing the men's program? I would say thank God for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to do something I've never done in this program. Okay, go ahead. I'm waiting. I'm going to make a pitch to everyone out there to seriously consider purchasing season tickets next year for the Lady Cards. Now, hopefully, when we're talking to you on Sunday morning, they will have won the first round of the Sweet 16 in Lexington and on their way to the Final Four in Columbus. Columbus is about a three-hour drive from our viewing area. Mm -hmm. And uh, season tickets for the Lady Cards are very reasonable. We've had them for two years. And the good feeling of sportsmanship mm -hmm. that is evident at every single women's basketball game, and also the skill of the players, it's yeah, we, it we must support yeah. these young women because they are truly the best face of the University of Louisville. Let me, add, let me add to your pitch. I would say even if they, God forbid, they do not win, still buy the tickets. Mm -hmm. Oh, abso See? absolutely. <clears throat> They've got to meet Connecticut sometime. <laughs> <laughs> and they played commendably well with uh, Connecticut this year. They'd lost, but it wasn't a blowout the right. way it had been in years yeah. past. So. Connecticut beat, beat its first round opponent 144 to 55, I think. Something like that. Yeah. It's been just, just annihilation. They've just, just not been... Yeah. Now, that was criminal. <laughs> that was violence by, now, how many by years basketball. Have, <laughs> how many years have they had a winning, winning season? Well, they've had several. Uh, Winning season. UConn. Winning uh, season. UConn. They, they lost last year in the tournament. South Carolina. They've won, won 10 championships. But I mean, overall, yes. a season. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've, they've had been, a tremendous been run. Been phenomenal yeah. run. Their time and, is up, you're saying? <clears throat> yeah. No. <laughs> no, maybe it's just beginning. I mean, it's, oh, no. it's good I'm to see some. UConn. I'm about UConn. Oh, oh, UConn. I'm, okay. And Jeff, Jeff Walls. No, I, back to him. I, I, oh, I'm wow. glad you. You know, he said something very wise. He wouldn't touch the men's basketball coaching job with a 10 foot ball. <laughs> he said he wants no parts of that. He's quite comfortable. Staying in his lane, uh, he clearly has, has mastered, had developed a niche coaching the ladies, and he's with great effect. You know, he was, wasn't always the most uh, effective orator, but he, he's, a, he's a great with communicating and getting the best out of the players, and he has got a reputation with recruiting. So, uh, so I got to take my hat off to him uh, uh, for the great work he's done, and him not even entertaining the possibility of being a coach over there with the men's side. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I'm looking forward to them going as far as they can, and uh, I just uh, I've watched them. Not every game, but when they've been on TV, I've tried to watch them most of the time this year. I've been to uh, their games in, in the past, and uh, it, it's it's good to go. And, and it's uh, you know, Stan, I thought you was going to take an offering there for a minute, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll put but, up a website at the end of the program right over there. Well, but it, you know, that's over. that's a great thing go. to be able to support them, and, and they pull. I mean, I've watched some of the other games, and even some of the men's games, and then I watch the women's game here at Louisville and it's like a, almost a different sport because of the support of the fans and the number of fans that are there and it has to be exciting for any ball player male or female to be able to play before an audience that's yelling and screaming and encouraging you or even if they're not encouraging you it's just a good atmosphere to play in and uh, I hope they go as far as they, they possibly can it, it helps take this this, and I, and the, again, it's not the players that are in trouble here, the current players uh, on the men's team, but it just helps to take some of the sting out from the athletic the department stigma. and uh -huh. everything. You know, we, we not only followed them here, but we, we happened to be in South Florida when they played the mm -hmm. University of Miami. Mm -hmm. And the game was at 11 a.m. on a Thursday morning, which mm -hmm. is... a Unusual time for a basketball game. Mm -hmm. uh, there were about maybe a hundred plus card fans surrounded by 4,000 <laughs> screaming Miami elementary school kids. <laughs> but, uh, and it was, it was kind of like what our, our team was used to. I, I thought of, you know, watching the games on TV and the ones that aren't, uh, here in Louisville, the, the, the women's basketball, you'll see them playing in what looks like a high school gym, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you could shoot a cannon through the stands and not hit a living soul. Mm -hmm. And then these teams come into Louisville where we, we get ten or 12,000 people sometimes for yeah. a women's basketball mm -hmm. game, and it's... It's the real deal. And I think they've also, been the salvation for the city. Yeah, I also mm. want to put in a plug for the swimming team because I think they've done uh, an excellent job this year. So any of the athletic department, it doesn't have to always focus yeah. on the negative. We right. could focus on the positive. Yeah, the baseball team's doing quite well again this yeah, year. Yeah, so. And we also, you know, moral side of the news, we're doing pretty well. Saying goodbye to David Padgett, All right. who really yes. has up. done a marvelous job in bringing back the program in the direction. And it's shown a great degree of maturity. All right, that's going to bring to our close. We congratulate Coach Jeff Walls and the University of Louisville Women's Basketball Program, and that will bring to our close our program, Moral Side of the News. So until next week, when they'll win or they'll lose, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. We wish you the best, and thanks for watching our program, Moral Side of the News. Thanks to Tom Mobley, Clay Calloway, Tony Smith, uh, Sean McLean, and Stan Miles are running <laughs> out of breath because I'm so excited about the game. <laughs> there you Thanks go. for watching and listening. <laughs> See you again next there week. You go. <laughs> That's good.